Hi, fantastic teachers. Do you sometimes identify as a snacker? And would you like that to change? That's today's topic. There are three advantages to deciding what kind of eater you want to be. First of all, you're going to gain control back as to what you're actually feeling. Then you're, you're going to regain control as to what you're eating and the amount of food you're actually consuming. And the third benefit is that you are going to regain control of your weight. If you're like the teachers who come to me to st stop stress eating, here's what may happen. So you notice that you reach out for the crisps, the biscuits, the chocolate, and you notice that you do that outside of the lunch hours, dinner hours, etc. And your goal actually is to not do that. Your goal is to eat less. And when you notice you're overeating around mealtimes, then you tell yourself, oh, I'm a snacker. And when you identify yourself as a snacker, then you may feel annoyed, irritated with yourself. And when you describe yourself as a snacker and you feel irritated, then the actions that you take may be to blame this fatality that you are a snacker and maybe you don't plan at all how you could change but on the um, on the other hand you reach out even more for the crisps biscuits and sweets etc and as a result of this behavior you actually stay the snacker you no longer want to be What's interesting is really the fact that you reaching out for food outside of, you know, mealtimes is not actually what's making you feel irritated or annoyed with yourself. That's impossible. Taking an action, whether it's reaching out for sweets or not, all right, or drinking a glass of water cannot ever make you feel a certain way, be it irritated, annoyed, or pleased, enthusiastic. It's impossible. However, one thing is sure, it's because you're telling yourself, I'm a snacker, that you feel irritated. It's not the action by itself, the fact that you have eaten some sweets or whatever you've eaten, that makes you feel irritated. It's the interpretation you're making about that. It's the identification you're using for yourself. The emotion you're feeling, the irritation, the annoyance is not coming from the action, as I said before, but it's coming from your thinking, you're deciding to think about you, that you're a snacker. The very good news is that it's an option among so many others. You don't have to tell yourself you are a snacker, especially since we've seen that the emotion coming from I'm a snacker, be it irritation or frustration maybe, or annoyance, actually leads you to eat more, to overeat. Because what do snackers do? They do snack, okay? They eat snacks and that's not what you want. So why is that sentence, I'm a snacker, such a problem? It's a problem because the emotion coming from the thought, I'm a snacker, leads you to actually eat even more. But let's explore it in detail. First of all, when you label yourself, I equals snacker, it's as if you're describing something that belongs to your DNA, just like the color of your eyes, maybe. When in reality, what we could do is just go back to an action you took. Yes, you ate that amount of food outside of mealtimes, and that's it. It doesn't have to be a limiting thing about you. The second problem with that thought, I'm a snacker, is that it's such a limiting belief. Sure, it must have served you at some point. Otherwise, why would you think that thought? 
But now, is it still you, serving you? Probably not. It's actually probably limiting yourself and keeping you stuck in that loop of snacking again and again and again. And the third problem with that thought, I'm a snacker, is that it's as if you're describing something that's happening to you and that you have nothing, there's nothing you can do about it. As if the power was out there somewhere, but not in your hand. And that's never true. So here's what we've seen. First, there's a label you're using, I'm a slacker, which has probably served you in the past at some point, And that's why you keep on using it. The second, second thing is that when we use a label for ourselves, then we feel we have to, you know, match that expectations of us. What do snackers do? They do eat snacks, they snack, right? And so since we maybe sometimes want to use labels for ourselves, why not use labels that serve us? So here are the three steps I teach all of my clients so that they can move forward when they notice they're having a thought like this. And actually that's the first step. The first step is always awareness. The first step is noticing. That's what we've done today. The second step is then to question. Question that thought, that belief, that limiting belief that you may have about yourself. And then the third step is deciding. So here's the second step. The second step is questioning this thought. So the first question could be, okay, so I'm describing myself as a snacker. What is the data? What are the percentage, the specific percentage that make me think, that make me decide that I'm a snacker? And it could be, yes, I snack 24 seven, um, even in my sleep, highly unlikely. <laughs> But really, I'd like you to really focus on what's true about this uh, statement, I'm a snacker. When it's not mealtime, how often do you actually snack? The second question could be, well, coming from this data, be it the number of hours during the week that you do snack, how can you describe yourself? How can you identify yourself with maybe a little bit more nuance by maybe using some uh, frequent uh, frequency adverbs, you know, like often, always, sometimes, never. So come examining the, this data that you've gathered, how would you describe yourself? I'm always a snacker, which would mean actually 24 seven, or am I uh, sometimes a snacker? Do I sometimes snack or do I often snack? And you know, I really want to invite you to actually uh, decide that often means this number of times. So that was question number two. Question number three is, okay, regardless of the data I've collected, who do I want to be? Do I really want to describe myself, myself as a snacker? And then it implies that I'm probably going to snack because that's part of the identity I've chosen for myself. Or do I want to identify as somebody else? And that's exactly the third step. Since the third step um, implies deciding, is all about deciding, here are three thoughts you may want to adapt or adopt for yourself. The first one is, instead of I'm a snacker, it could be, sometimes I snack. The second thought could be, I'm becoming one, I'm becoming the one who no longer snacks. Or another option could be, I'm becoming the one who savors her meals around mealtime so much that it's more than enough. That's it. I hope this video was useful to you. Please send me a message at nscoachingoutlook.fr to tell me if this video was useful and if you still struggle with your overeating or with your stress eating, please let me know how I can help you because this is really my mission to help you stop stress eating so that we can all contribute to a better world. With that said, I wish you a very good rest of your day. Take care, bye.